Hi everyone, Joel Johnson here for Native Seeds at our Conservation Center Gardens. As we film, it's early October here in the low desert and our sunflowers have just finished pollination and are starting to set and mature their seeds. So we wanted to take just a minute and take you through the process of, of how we grow and save seed from these sunflowers here in the low desert. There are a lot of reasons to incorporate sunflowers into your farm or garden rotation. Um, you probably already are aware of the edible seeds that they produce, um, but you may not be aware that the leaves that sunflowers produce, and this is one of our largest here, can also be used as an animal fodder. The seeds can produce a, a really well-used oil crop. And what we think of a lot as we produce and grow sunflowers here is their ability to remediate and heal soils. Sunflowers like this one, we, we're growing Hopi black dye this season have a long tap root which can help them weather drought and, and go longer periods without water, but also a fibrous rooting system. And those two, in combination with the relationship with fungi in the soil, allow them to, to capture and hold contaminants in the soil, which is why they've been used to remediate heavy metals and do other cleanup projects. But what we think about a lot as we plant and incorporate sunflowers is their ability to put organic matter back into the soil. When we grow sunflowers like this, when they're done, we're gonna cut them right at the base of the soil and leave those roots in the soil. And that's gonna add organic matter and increase the water holding capacity of that soil as we move forward. One of the pests that we see on sunflowers season to season is lace bugs. They're very easy to spot because you'll start to notice discoloration on the top of the leaf. And as soon as you flip that leaf over, you're gonna find the eggs and adults of those lace bugs um, as they work their way through. These are pretty easy to deal with. As long as you catch them early, you can just blast them off with water or use a soapy spray or neem oil. And that'll just keep them in check as long as they don't go crazy um, and, and really start to kill whole leaves. Um, you'll still have plenty of seed set and the, and the plants will produce just fine. When saving sunflower seeds, it's important to be able to recognize when pollination has been completed and when seeds are ready for maturity. A sunflower is interesting because it's not all one flower. It's actually a composite flower of many individual flowers within the head that need to be pollinated in order to set a single seed each. Pollination on sunflower seeds occurs from the outside of the disc towards the center. And you'll be able to recognize that because you'll see bees and insects working their way around the perimeter. And then as the individual flowers open, they'll open towards the center and pollination will occur in the same direction. This flower has been completely pollinated and you'll notice you can actually see the seeds beginning to form behind the closed flower. Um, and there'll be a very uniform grid pattern that shows you pollination has been completed right to the center of the flower. When this happens, it's time to go ahead and bag the sunflower head to protect it from birds or other animals who will get to the seed before you're able to. This sunflower was bagged as soon as pollination was complete. And what we'll watch for is color change on the back of the seed head to show us that it's reaching maturity. The ray flowers, those beautiful yellow leaves and, and flower leaves will wither and fall off as the seeds start to dry. And you can notice the back of this seed head is just beginning to change colors from the bright green while it was growing. And it'll move to yellow as the seeds mature and finally brown as the seeds are ready for harvest. You can see on this flower head that the seeds aren't ready for harvesting yet, but if you rub off the flowers, you'll notice the seeds are forming right below them. And as easily as I rub those flowers off, when the whole head has turned brown, you'll be able to rub those seeds right off as well, and they'll be ready for saving and using however you want. When the sunflower heads do reach maturity and they're nice and brown on the back of the head, they can still have a relatively high moisture content. So it's important that you allow them to dry in the field as long as you can. 
the first frost can actually speed up this drying process and, and help you um, allow those seeds to dry out. But if you're expecting rain, which we are this coming Monday, um, it's important to go ahead and cut those, bring them inside and allow them to continue to dry on the drying rack um, so you don't spoil those seeds. Once they've dried, it'll be very easy for you to dislodge the seeds from the mature heads with just a gloved hand. If they come off easily, that's a good sign that the mature seeds are ready for harvest. Something you'll also want to consider when you do bring those seeds in is it might be a good idea to put them in the freezer for anywhere from three days to a week. That will kill off any bugs that may be in among the seeds or even within the seeds um, to ensure that they can be stored long term. Thanks for watching. For more information on seed saving, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for future videos or visit us online at nativeseeds.org.